Hello ninjas, Dennis is here. In this module, we will practice improving codes that suffer from bad speculation and in particular, we will learn how to reduce the number of branch mispredictions. The name bad speculation might sound confusing to you, so first of all, let's demystify its meaning. On this slide, I'm showing you top-down microarchitecture analysis categorization and as you can see, bad speculation is one of the four main buckets. In order to speed up program execution, modern processors try to do many sophisticated things. One of such things is speculative execution. CPUs try to predict programs' behavior based on statistical data and heuristics. Generally, modern processors are quite good at predicting program execution, but sometimes they miss. And bad speculation category account for penalties when prediction was wrong. In top-down methodology, bad speculation is further broken down to two subcategories, branch mispredictions and machine clears. Let's take a closer look at both starting from the most popular, which is, of course, branch mispredictions. Here I show you a simple five-stage execution pipeline. Of course, this is an oversimplified version of a pipeline in a modern CPU, but it's enough to explain the concept of speculative execution. The processing of instructions is divided into stages. We first need to fetch the instruction from memory, decode it, then, if all the inputs are ready and execution resources are available, we issue the instruction. Then comes the actual execution. It can be addition, multiplication, and so on. And finally, we commit the results of an operation to the observable state. It could be writing results of an addition to a register file or to a memory location. Stages of the pipeline operate in parallel working on different parts of different instructions. It means that instruction 1 can be in the fetch stage, instruction 2 in the decode stage, instruction 3 can be in the execution stage and so on. Consider this simple piece of code. If a less than b, then we call foo, otherwise we call bar. Let's see how our code progresses through this pipeline. We load a, then load B, then we check the condition and we branch. But here is the catch. Decoder says, ah, you're a branch, but I don't know what to do with you. Should we call foo or bar? The machine doesn't have a clue. This only will be known later when we execute this instruction and find out the result. So we stall and wait until we know which function to call. Finally, we find out that it should have been foo, so we go ahead and start executing instructions from that function. But look, we wasted three cycles. It would be quite inefficient to waste three cycles on every single branch, so in order to speed up things, we can try to guess which function will be called, and in fact, this is what modern processors do. And this is called speculative execution. So we have the same code again, but with speculative execution, when we see a branch, we try to guess what would be the result of that branch. And let's suppose that we predicted that it will be foo. We don't know for sure that it will be true. It is just our prediction. So we keep track of all the instructions that we execute speculatively. And we keep on executing until we know the result of the branch instruction. And suppose that our prediction was correct. Oh, we are so lucky. We simply keep on running like nothing happened and enjoy three cycles that we have saved. But let's also examine the opposite scenario when we mispredicted the outcome of the branch. We run the code and think that foo will be called again. But this time it is bar, oh no. And it turns out that all our speculative work is wrong and we cannot commit it to the observable state. 
what we do in this case is that we mark those speculative instructions as non-retiring. What that means is that we can still execute them, but we never commit their results. So they essentially become a no op This process is also called flushing the pipeline and on modern processors, it can take from 15 to 20 cycles depending on the length of the pipeline. So yeah, this was the branch prediction mechanism. And on this slide, I'm showing you the place of the BPU or branch predictor unit on the microarchitecture block diagram. Traditionally, predictions are based on prior history of the branch. So branch predictor is essentially a cache. Although more modern CPUs employ new types of predictors based on machine learning techniques. And actually often there are more than one branch predictor inside the CPU core. So that was one of the subcategories of bad speculation. Let's look at the second one, which is called machine clears. It happens much less frequently and there is a small chance that you will ever have to deal with such problems. Nevertheless, for completeness, let's take a look at one of the example of memory order conflicts also sometimes called nukes. A memory ordering conflict occurs in a multi-threaded program when a store executed in another thread hits a load speculatively executed in the current thread that is not yet retired. I know it's a complicated description, so let's take a look at the example. Suppose we have such a code. If A less than B, then we load element Y from some shared array and use its value in some computations. Let's see how this code will progress through the pipeline. As before, instructions flow through the pipeline stages and once we see a branch, we need to guess the outcome. We predict that the branch will be taken and so we speculatively load the element Y from the shared array. We continue speculatively executing instructions that use the value X, but suddenly load B misses in all levels of caches. And so we have to wait until it will be read from the DRAM. Well, that's unfortunate. And it also means that branch instruction cannot be executed as well since we don't have all the inputs ready for it. Nevertheless, we can continue speculatively executing the code inside the if statement since there are no data dependencies in it. And so we keep on going until we reach this situation where we have multiple stalled instructions, which by the way is very typical for a modern superscalar CPU. They could have a hundreds instructions in flight. Now, suppose that there was another thread that has overwritten the element Y of the shared array, which we read previously. That means that the value we hold in X is no longer valid. And so the load needs to be restarted and all its subsequent instructions need to be restarted as well. And that's quite unfortunate since a lot of work was thrown away, but I should say it doesn't happen too often. And I just briefly mentioned another source of machine clears, which are caused by self-modifying code, which can happen when a program executes speculatively some code which gets overwritten by this same program. And I will not dig into the details here. You can read more about the self-modifying code on the internet, but just wanted to say that SMC is a constant source of headaches for the CPU architects. Here is the agenda for this module. We will mainly focus on branchless algorithms, which help us to get rid of branch mispredictions. Okay, this is it for this video. And now I invite you to check the lab assignments in this section. I see you there.